Imagine life without your smartphone. No camera in your pocket. No instant messages. No GPS to find your way. No social media. No music on the go. And definitely no memes. From checking the weather to capturing memories, ordering food, navigating traffic, binge watching shows, or even running an entire business, these little devices do it all. They're basically digital Swiss army knives in your pocket. But here's the real question. How did we get here? What's the story behind that sleek, all-powerful screen in your hand? Let's rewind the tape and dive into the surprising, often forgotten history of smartphones, a journey from clunky bricks to the mini supercomputers we carry every day. It all started in 1994, with a device that looked more like a walkie-talkie than a phone, the IBM Simon Personal Communicator. Priced at $1,099, that's nearly $2,000 today, Simon was the first true smartphone, and it was ahead of its time. It had a touchscreen, could send and receive emails and faxes, manage contacts and calendars, and even included apps like a notepad and a calculator. It wasn't sleek, and it wasn't fast, but it was visionary. Fast forward to 1996. The world was introduced to the Palm Pilot, one of the first successful personal digital assistants, PDA in short. It wasn't a phone yet, but it revolutionized portable computing. You could store notes, contacts, to-do lists, and sync it with your computer. A few years later, companies started combining PDA brains with phone features, and the smart part of smartphones started taking shape. This was the beginning of handheld productivity on the go. By the early 2000s, one name dominated the game, BlackBerry. With its full QWERTY keyboard and ultra-secure email service, BlackBerry became the go-to device for professionals, CEOs, and even presidents. Barack Obama famously refused to give up his BlackBerry. It wasn't flashy, but it was powerful. BBM, BlackBerry Messenger, was the texting revolution before WhatsApp and iMessage ever existed. It was fast, free, and addicting, hence the nickname Crackberry. If you had one, you were a serious player. At the same time, Nokia and Sony Ericsson were exploring new features that started to make phones feel less like phones and more like digital companions. Nokia's phones, powered by Symbian OS, started including built-in cameras, music players, and color screens. These devices were fun, customizable, and tough as tanks. They were less about business and more about style, entertainment, and creativity. But no one saw what was coming next. Then came 2007, the year that changed everything. Steve Jobs walked onto the stage and pulled a small rectangle out of his pocket. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. Are you getting it? He said. That device was the first iPhone, and it was like nothing anyone had seen before. No physical keyboard, just a single button and a responsive, capacitive multi-touch screen. It was sleek, intuitive, and completely redefined how we interact with technology. And when the App Store launched in 2008, that's when it really took off. Suddenly, your phone wasn't just a phone. It was a game console, a photo editor, a flashlight, a map, a music studio, you name it. The smartphone had officially arrived. But Apple wasn't alone for long. That same year, Google launched Android, a free and open source mobile operating system. Unlike iOS, which was exclusive to Apple, Android could be used by any phone manufacturer. The first Android phone, the HTC Dream, may not have looked like much, but it sparked a global revolution. Companies like Samsung, LG, Motorola, and HTC all jumped on board. What followed was a massive boom in smartphone innovation, with new designs, features, and competition that pushed the entire industry forward. And so began the legendary battle, iPhone versus Android. The 2010s were the golden age of smartphones. Every year brought faster processors, better cameras, and bigger screens. Apple introduced the Retina display, and Samsung led the way with AMOLED screens and stunning visuals. Phones became our cameras, our GPS, our music players, and even our wallets. Apps like Instagram, WhatsApp, Snapchat, and TikTok changed the way we connect. Taking a selfie became second nature. Sharing your life became effortless. 
Even how we paid for things changed, thanks to Apple Pay and Google Wallet. And then came the biometric era. First, fingerprint scanners, then Face ID. Security got better, and phones felt more personal than ever. By the end of the decade, the smartphone wasn't just a tool, it was an extension of you. Today, smartphones are more powerful than the computers that put humans on the moon. They can shoot in 4K, handle console-quality games, and edit professional videos. We have foldable phones, edge-to-edge -edge displays, under-display fingerprint readers, and multi-lens cameras that rival DSLRs. We've entered the age of 5G, cloud gaming, and AI-powered photography. Your phone knows when you're driving, when you're sleeping, and can even help diagnose health issues. Some can detect car crashes, others help translate languages in real time. And now, with on-device AI chips, smartphones are getting smarter, not just faster. So, what's next? Tech giants are already working on AI-first devices, augmented reality glasses, and screenless gadgets like the Humane AI Pin and Rabbit R1. We might soon ditch the phone altogether for something more immersive, more wearable, or even implantable. The future is wild and it's already happening. But one thing's for sure, the smartphone changed everything. It reshaped communication, it transformed entire industries, it redefined how we work, play, shop, learn, and live. And it's still evolving. So here's a fun question. What was your very first smartphone? Drop it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this journey through tech history, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. This is FS and FS signing off.